need computer training for a group or office, contact us today to get a free demo of our training at www.teachucomp.com forward slash enterprise dash licensing. Word 2013 and 2010 allows you to assign a macro to a button that appears in the ribbon, the quick access toolbar, or to an unused keyboard shortcut of your choosing. This can make running macros much easier than the process involved with running them through the macros dialog box. Once you have assigned a macro to a button or to a keyboard shortcut, you can simply click the button or press the keyboard shortcut in order to run the associated macro. You assign macros to buttons or keyboard shortcuts in the Word Options dialog box. You can access this dialog box by clicking the File tab in the ribbon and then clicking the Options button in the lower left corner of the Command panel. This will open the Word Options dialog box. Next, you must decide if you want to assign the macro to a button on a tab within the ribbon, to a button in the Quick Access toolbar, or to a keyboard shortcut. If you want to assign the macro to a button on a tab within the ribbon, then first click the Customize Ribbon category at the left side. Next, use the Choose Commands From drop-down to select the Macros category. You should see the macros that you created appear within this column. You can then select the Main Tabs command from the Customize the Ribbon drop-down. You will then see the tabs and groups appear in the column as a collapsed outline. You can click the plus signs to expand a tab and see the groups within it. When you add macro buttons to a tab, they must appear within their own custom groups that you create on the tab. To do this, start by selecting the name of the tab within which you want to create your custom macro button group. Then click the New Group button at the bottom of the column to add a new group to the selected tab. Also note that you can create your own custom tab itself by clicking the New Tab button instead if you prefer to add your macros to a custom tab versus a custom group. Once you have created a custom group, make sure it is selected within the column. Then select the name of the macro to add to this custom group by selecting it from the Choose Commands From column. You can then click the Add button that appears between the columns to add the selected macro to the selected custom group in the ribbon. Note that you can then select the custom group, tab, or macro button that you have created and click the Rename button at the bottom of the column in order to rename the custom group or custom tab using the Rename dialog box. In the Rename dialog box, you can select a button symbol from the Symbol section if desired. Next, type a name for the button, group, or tab into the Display Name text box. Then click the OK button to apply your changes. Also note that the Reset button at the bottom of this column appears next to the Customizations label. You can click this button to select either Reset Only Selected Ribbon Tab or Reset All Customizations. This will reset the currently selected Ribbon Tab or Reset All Customizations based on which command you choose. You can use this to reset unwanted customizations to the ribbon if they occur. If you want to assign a macro to the Quick Access Toolbar instead of the ribbon, start by selecting the Quick Access Toolbar category from the left side of the dialog box. Then select Macros from the Choose Commands From drop-down. The name of your macro should appear in the list below the drop-down menu. Select the name of the macro that you want to add to the Quick Access Toolbar from this list. Then click the Add button in the middle of the two columns to move the command from this list to the right list. The list at the right side of the window is a listing of the buttons that will be available on the Quick Access Toolbar. Note that you can click on the name of the macro shown in the list at the right side, and then click the small upwards and downwards pointing arrows that are next to it in order to move the command up or down through the listing of button commands. Also, if you want to give the button a different picture, you can select the name of the macro in the list at the right, and then click the Modify button at the bottom of the list. In the Modify button dialog box that appears, you can click on the button picture that you want to use for the macro, 
from the symbol list. Then enter a name for the button into the display name text box. And then click the OK button. If you want to assign a macro to a keyboard shortcut instead of a button, start by clicking the Customize Ribbon category at the left side of the box. Then click the Customize button in the lower left corner of the Options side of the dialog box. This will open up the Customize Keyboard Shortcuts dialog box. Select Macros from the Categories list at the left side of this box. That will then display all of the available macros in the Macros list at the right side of the box. Select the macro that you would like to assign to a keyboard shortcut from the Macros list. Next, click into the Press New Shortcut Key text box and press a new keyboard shortcut combination, such as Alt-Shift-B, for example. If the selected keyboard shortcut is assigned, it will display the function to which the keyboard shortcut has been assigned below the current keys list. If it is unassigned, it will display that fact in the same location. Make sure that the keyboard shortcut that you use is unassigned. If you assign a macro to a standard or assigned keyboard shortcut, you will overwrite the standard shortcut. Once you can see that your keyboard shortcut is unassigned, Click the Assign button and then click the Close button. Once you have finished assigning your macros using the Word Options dialog box, click the OK button in the lower right corner of the dialog box to finish your customization and close the box. Like what you see? Get a free demo of our training for groups of five or more at www.teachucomp.com forward slash enterprise dash licensing.